okay so so this is lecture what lecture 10 and uh, the last thing we saw on the previous lecture i want to remind you real quick what it was what did we see we said a finite field with q elements fq is going to be what set of all a0 plus a1x plus so on till a m minus 1 x to the power m minus 1 with a i coming from what where do a i come from if q is p power m a i should come from f p okay this is a nice way of thinking about the finite field with q elements okay and how do you do addition addition is very simple if you have two polynomials a of x and b of x how do you add a of x and b of x simple polynomial addition right you add the coefficients and you would add the coefficients modulo p like you say should okay so addition is very easy a of x plus b of x is simple polynomial addition okay right for multiplication you needed a what irreducible polynomial of degree m irreducible over which field fpx okay in that in that in that uh, with f over fp it needs to be irreducible okay so so the definition of the field includes all these three things it, it should also include the pi of x right <coughs> right that defines one of the operations okay definition of the field includes the set and the definition of the two operations so obviously pi of x should also be included because that defines how multiplication is done in this field okay so pi of x is say some pi 0 plus uh, pi m okay so let me rewrite this i'm sorry pi 0 plus pi 1 x plus so on till <coughs> let's say pi m minus 1 x to the power m minus 1 then I'll write x power m. Okay, so this is an an irreducible polynomial. Okay, what, where do the pi i's come from? The pi i's come from f p, and this guy has to be irreducible. Okay. Okay, can I always do this? Can I always write the coefficient of x power m as one? Yeah, I can, right? If it is not one, what would you do? What would you do? divide by that coefficient or multiply by the inverse of that coefficient modulo p right so you know you can always do that so why, why do i know that the coefficient is not zero I chose it to be degree m right so i can always make it monic it's not one degree the leading coefficient can have can be made one it's not a problem okay what about pi zero can pi zero be zero it cannot be zero yeah yeah if pi zero is zero what happens to this polynomial you can it's reducible you can pull x out right so pi 0 is not 0 okay so even that you know okay so in the binary case if p is 2 what will pi 0 be 1 right? something that's not 0 in binary has to be 1 there's no other choice okay so that's the that's how pi of x would look okay so how do you multiply multiplication is done like i pointed out a of x times b of x this is regular polynomial multiplication and then you would do modulo pi of x Okay, so what's modulo pi of x? This whole thing will result in r of x, where r of x is the remainder when remainder when what? A of x times b of x is divided by by pi of x. Okay. So how do I know this R of X will belong to F Q? Yeah, so it will be a polynomial in F P X. That is clear, right? Right, and then its degree will be strictly less than M. Okay, so obviously it will be in F Q. Okay, so I'll get the quotient. Okay, so I didn't really prove it. I simply said it's very easy. It's a similar proof as the fp case for what is the proof i'm talking about the inverse right how do i know that ax has an inverse how do i know for every ax there is some other polynomial in fq 
which when multiplied modulo p this r of x will be what 1 okay so how do i know that that's this is proved by by that argument the same argument i'm not going to write that proof down but the same argument as for y inverse exists in it okay so you multiply by all those things and figure it out okay so what we'll begin doing in this class is look at a few examples okay of these fields then uh, then just just to get used to how arithmetic is done in this field okay so these are like new numbers you are learning okay so you remember you've been learning about natural numbers integers real numbers rational numbers for how many years now okay for your past so many years you have to use all that experience and learn to use these numbers within a few weeks okay hopefully okay so for many people it takes more than a few weeks but hopefully uh, you, with constant work you can be better than that Okay, so these are new numbers. You have to get used to how to manipulate them. But but they are like numbers, right? You can add, multiply, subtract, divide. You can do everything. They are like numbers. Okay, you can think of polynomials with them. You can think of matrices with them. You can think of anything else you want with them. Okay, it's not a problem. All right. The first example I want to provide is f4. Okay, so one of the simplest example, right? Can I have the field f4? Yeah, it's it's the power of a prime. Okay, what 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 power is it? 2 power 2 okay so i know its characteristic is 2 and the dimension m is 2 again okay all those things you can figure out just because i said f4 okay so that's the first observation you can make okay so what will it contain now okay so it will contain the polynomial 0 then it will contain the polynomial 1 then it will contain x and 1 plus x right these are its four entries you can think of its four entries as 0 1 x 1 plus x okay so all the polynomials with binary coefficients of degree less than or equal to 1 okay so all those polynomials i have exhausted so you can write it down just writing them down is is okay i could, I could have written anything else i want there also what is crucial in a field the operations what happens when i add any two elements what element do i get next okay that is what is crucial the fact that I call it 1x and 1 plus x is completely arbitrary. I can call it apple, orange, banana if I want. All I have to say is how I add any two things. Okay, That is what is crucial. Okay, What I call it is just a name. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference. Okay, So how do I add? Is addition very clear? Right? I don't have to explain addition at all. If I add any two things, it's fine. What about additive inverse? What's the additive inverse of x? Okay, What's the additive inverse of x? x itself right you add x to x you get 0 okay so i'll simply show a couple of those examples for instance if you do x plus 1 plus x what do you get 1 okay so is that the inverse it's not the inverse remember the additive identity is what 0 it's not 1 okay so you have to add something to x to get 0 okay so you'll see that only only thing is x okay x plus x for instance is 0 in fact in any field with characteristic 2 what will be the additive inverse of any element it will be itself okay so characteristic 2 will immediately make that if characteristic is not 2 then you will have other elements being inverse of each other characteristic 2 additive inverse is always the same element okay so okay so let us get into multiplication for multiplication we need what what do we need okay so what is pi of x So what degree should pi of x be? 2. Okay. So it should have an x square term. Then it should have a plus 1. And then what can be what can the remaining one be? Okay. X. Why does it have to be x? What will happen if it is 0? Yeah, x square plus 1 is not irreducible, right? In fact, x square plus x plus 1 is the only irreducible polynomial of degree 2 with binary coefficient. Okay. I think I made that statement even in last class, maybe last class or maybe the previous one. Okay, so you can exhaust all the degree 2 polynomials if you want, and then you'll see that x squared plus x plus 1 is the only irreducible polynomial. So there's no other choice. Okay, typically you'll have choice. You'll see in the other constructions, see you'll have one or two choices. You have to pick one, but in this case. Yeah, you can. It's not a big deal. It's not a real choice, but this. Uh, yeah. Just feel like you have a choice, like between choosing between Pepsi and Coke. Okay, all right. So, 
So, okay, so now that I have pi of x, what should I be able to do? Should be able to add and multiply, or no, now I can multiply, right? Right? So, what, what multiplication do you want me to show first? Pick some element. So, I am sorry? 1 plus x times x, okay? So, some people want that multiplication, okay? Tell me what is this, okay? So, how do I do this multiplication in this field? I have to multiply and then divide by divide by what x squared plus x plus 1 okay if i do that division what will i get here what's the quotient 1 then there would be x squared plus x plus 1 and then when you subtract this becomes 1 so what's the remainder 1 so x times 1 plus x times x is 1 in this field okay remember this is only in this field of course if you say this is the argument for that say 1 plus x times x is 1 people will might laugh at you in other fields okay but in this field 1 plus x times x is 1 okay so that's how it works okay so what's the multiplicative inverse of x 1 plus x what's the multiplicative inverse of 1 plus x x okay so you can find all those things any other non trivial multiplication people might be interested in yeah don't keep thinking of one element times another element you might have to multiply one element with itself right it's an important multiplication so you might be interested in x multiplied with itself or 1 plus x multiplied with itself okay so what's x multiplied with itself x times x is x squared you can do this long division and then you'll see this will be x plus 1 or 1 plus x again okay okay suppose i do 1 plus x times 1 plus x okay you'll see at the end of the day you'll get x okay so there's a shortcut to doing all this without doing the long division if you remember some rules about well, that you that might that might be a little bit tricky suppose i give you x power 10 what will you do you know suppose i say what's x power 10 what will you do what is this <laughs> yeah so it seems, seems like you need to do some work okay so so, or you divide x power 10 by x square plus x plus 1, do a long division, ultimately you will get a reminder, it is not a big deal, you can do one of those two things, okay. But, but this, this is a smarter way to do this in this field, this field has more structure than you can imagine, okay. So, for that, let us do x power 3, okay. So, you will see x power 3 will be very surprised. What is x power 3? Okay, what is x power 3? You already know x squared. Well, 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 let us let us not jump the gun yet, okay. I am going to ask you to be a little bit more patient, okay. <laughs> I, I like the enthusiasm, but please be a little bit more patient, otherwise it will steal the thunder from me. I want to be the one who is saying, okay. So, x power 3 as, as you have seen immediately is going to be 1, okay, okay, all right. That is the, that is one relationship which can be very, very useful in computation. Why is this very useful in computation? If you know x power 3 is 1, what is x power 6? 1, right? Do you agree? Right? So, so you see, I mean, these are new numbers that you are playing around with, but the old rules, many of the old rules you can exploit. You know, if x power 3 is 1 and you know your multiplication is commutative and all that, right? So, all those properties play in. If you do x power 6, you always, always get 1 because you can write x power 6 as x power 3 times x power 3. Okay, what about x power 9? 1 again. So, what will x power 10 be? x okay so you see if you use that once you use this you immediately see x power 10 is x again you're not really scared at all about writing down x power is that clear okay so what about 1 plus x power 10 what will you do now so how do you know 1 plus x whole power 3 is 1 oh so you're using Okay, so what he is suggesting is, you know, any element in a group, finite group, raised to the order of the group, size of the group is going to be 1, right? That is something we I, I claimed. So, any element here raised to the power 3 is going to be 1, okay? So, you can use that and nicely reduce it to 1 plus x, okay? So, maybe, maybe that is something you want to do, okay? So, you can see that will also be true, okay? There is another thing which I want you to 
want you to think about, which is again curious here, okay. So pi of x, right, I started with pi of x being x squared plus x plus 1, okay, and I am doing everything modulo x squared plus x plus 1. So if I take this field elements and evaluate x squared plus x plus 1, what will I get? Okay. If I evaluate x power x squared plus x plus 1, am I, am I allowed to do this? Is that, a, is that a legal operation? Can I take x, take x squared? Yeah, I can compute x squared. I, can, I know what x is. I can compute x. Then I add 1. What will this be? In f4, this would be 0. You do not even have to do the computation. You know, everything you are doing modulo pi of x. So, pi of x itself should evaluate to 0. Okay. So, this gives you an equation. Okay, it gives you several equations. It gives you, for instance, it tells you x squared in terms of lesser power terms. Okay, so what is x squared now? Minus 1 minus x, but what is minus 1 in, in characteristic 2? Plus 1 again. So this tells me x squared is 1 plus x. Okay. Okay. Is that clear? Okay, and then what is x power 3? 1. Okay. okay. No, I mean x power 3 is 1 independently. You can multiply x squared by x if you want. You would get x plus x squared. Okay. So, what is x power 3? 1 plus x times x. Do you agree? Right. x squared times x. x plus x squared. What is x plus x squared? 1. Okay. So, you will see in my field f4, if I want to write it again and if I want to have easy rules for multiplication, addition and all that, I might as well write my field as 0, 1, x, x squared and say x power 3 will be 1 and x squared is 1 plus x. Suddenly, you see the field is starting to look better. Okay. Somebody might say 0, 1, x, x squared with these rules looks better than 0, 1, x, 1 plus x. This, this field is anyway so small. All these tricks will not make a big difference. May, maybe it doesn't look very different, but you'll see eventually these these kind of tricks will be very very useful. Okay, so now these two relation these two relations are enough. You can do any computation you want with just these two relations. Okay. Okay. So that's f four for you. Okay. It's also very common as we go along to use alpha instead of x. Why would you want to do that? Why would you use alpha instead of x? Just to make it sound more mathematical, you know. The moment you have Greek letters, everything becomes mathematical. If it's only Latin letters, you think, okay, it's just English literature, right? And once you have alphas and betas, you think, okay, I have to pay attention now. It's not, it's not very easy. Okay, so it's very typical to write everything with Greek letters, and alpha is a very good choice. People usually use that, and then h square is one plus alpha. Now, do I get a starkingly different field? I obviously don't, right? I've just replaced everything with alpha and I'm doing everything else in the exact same way, right? Like I said, I don't even have to say all this. I can simply say instead of 1, I can use any other name I want, okay? So that's the abstractness here. My, my, my numbers, there are just four numbers I have in F4, 0, 1, alpha, alpha square, and those are the rules for addition and multiplication. I know I have a field, I can do all these things. Okay, another reason why you might want to use alpha instead of x as in future, you will want to think of polynomials with f4 as the coefficient. It's a field, right? You can have coefficients as from the field. At that point, if this is also x and then your polynomial is also x, just run into confusion. Okay, So it's good to move to something else which is nice. So then you can think of polynomials with f4 as coefficients. Okay, so that's always something good to do. Okay? All right. So the next example we'll see. What do you want next? What's the next non-trivial F8, right? Everything else would be FP otherwise. Okay, F8 is the next thing. Let's do F8. Okay. Okay. If you were to just list out all the elements of F8, what would you list out? You would have to list out all. So what how do you how do you start first? Once you see 8, write it, write it as a prime power, right? 2 power 3. Okay, so you know characteristic is 2. Okay, and my F8 will actually have all polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2 with coefficients from f2, binary coefficients. Okay, So it's just a question of 
enumerating all those polynomials. You simply write all the 3 bit sequ 3 bit letters and put x and x square in suitable places and you will get that right. So, how do I do that? Write down all the 3 bit vectors. Okay. And then associate this with the constant term, associate this with the x term or alpha term and associate this with the alpha square term. Okay. And then you can write down all the polynomials. So 0, 1, alpha, 1 plus alpha, alpha squared, right? 1, 1 plus alpha squared, alpha plus alpha squared and then 1 plus alpha plus alpha squared. Okay, so that is a quick way of writing down all these polynomials. Okay, simply write down all the how many ever uh, three all the three bit vectors, okay, all the three bit numbers, and then associate each position with the power of alpha and simply multiply and then write out the things. That is a fate. Okay. All right. So next I need the primitive uh, uh, the irreducible polynomial, I am sorry. The irreducible polynomial pi of alpha. Okay, so, I need a polynomial of degree what? Degree 3 irreducible and coefficients coming from F2 binary coefficients right that all came from 8 being 2 power 3 okay, the 3 came degree 3 came from that 3 this guy this is the degree. Okay, so, this tells me the coefficients are binary. Okay. So, you can play around a little bit and you will see there are two choices here, I am sorry alpha power 3 plus alpha plus 1 okay, or you can also choose alpha power 3 plus alpha squared plus 1, okay, you can also choose that. Okay, okay we will we'll, we'll pick alpha power 3 plus alpha plus 1, okay. so as I have been saying all along eventually we will see any two fields of the same size are essentially the same, they are isomorphic. So, it should not really matter which which pi of alpha I pick here. So, you can just pick the first one you get. Okay. You will see later on if you make an intelligent choice your arithmetic will get simpler, simply uh, much simpler. Okay. So, you might want to make that intelligent choice later on, but for now we will just pick this. This is a good enough choice. I know I know that this is a good choice. Yes. Alpha 3 plus alpha square plus alpha plus 1. That is not, that is not irreducible. If you put alpha equals 0 what do you get? Alpha equals 1 what do you get? 0. So, alpha plus 1 divides that. Okay, alpha power 3 plus alpha plus 1 is the only, it is an interesting choice. How do you find these irreducible Yeah, there are a lot of them. So, you keep trying randomly one after the other eventually you will quickly find. Okay. No, that is I think that is that is a pretty good algorithm. It is not a bad algorithm. Converge quite fast. Okay, all right. So doing computation in large fields is also tough. So people usually don't try those things. But, but this is easy. Okay. So what should we do next? We should try to do some computations, right? Now computations here are going to get trickier. Okay. So you can see already. So you might say, if, for instance, if I say alpha power nine, okay, maybe you're not so upset. Why? Alpha power what? Alpha power seven, you know, is one. So you can use some easy easy ideas and get out, get out with alpha power 9, but what about alpha power 6? I mean, you cannot do anything with it, right? You have to go through and actually divide, right? Okay, so or maybe 1 plus alpha plus alpha squared, okay, so maybe raised to the power 6, okay, how do you, how do you compute this? Okay, what is the brute force way of computing this? Okay, so if you were to do it directly, you have to actually evaluate this whole thing and then divide by alpha power 3 plus alpha plus 1 and it is getting painful, right? So, you can see even in F8 doing multiplications is not going to be easy. What about doing additions? Addition. Additions is trivial, right? It is just addition. Keep on adding, there is no problem. Multiplication is going to be tough, okay? So, the first thing we need to simplify is the following idea, okay? So, I will show you this one, this one structure that is hidden here which is not immediately visible that will come out if you try this computation. Okay, and that, that, that structure is true for all fields, we will see later on, but for now let us try this computation. Okay. So, I can deal with 0, there is no problem, I can deal with 1, I can deal with alpha. The moment I have till alpha square, there is really no problem. The moment I have alpha power 3, I am running into difficulty, right? Why? Alpha power 3 is what? 
alpha power 3 is not in the field, right? The way I written it down, alpha power 3 is not in the field directly. So, I have to divide by alpha power 3 plus alpha plus 1, right? Of course, I have to do it. It is all degree less. And then what would you get if you divide? This will become alpha plus 1, right? Do you see that? Okay. So, here you can come to this directly by using simply the identity that pi of alpha will be what? 0 in what? In F8, right? What is pi of alpha? Alpha power 3 plus alpha plus 1 is 0. You move the other two guys on that side. So, you immediately get alpha power 3 is alpha plus 1. Okay. All you can divide. I mean, I am perfectly fine if you divide and you get alpha power 3 equals alpha plus 1. If I want alpha power 4, what would I do? What is the best way of doing? Multiply alpha power 3 by alpha. Okay. I have already done the work to find alpha power 3. I do not want to forget it. Okay. So, I will simply multiply this with alpha. I would get alpha squared plus alpha. So, let us try alpha power 5. What would you get? Okay, so you get alpha power 3 plus alpha squared. Okay, then what would you do for alpha power 3? Okay, I know it is already 1 plus alpha. I have already done the computation. So, I get alpha squared plus alpha plus 1. Okay, then alpha power 6, what do I do? I multiply alpha power 5 by alpha. Okay, so alpha power 3 plus alpha squared plus alpha. Then what would I do with alpha power 3? Replace with alpha plus 1. So, I get alpha squared plus 1. Okay, the alpha would cancel. What should happen if I try to compute alpha power 7? I should get 1 because the multiplicative group has size 7. Okay, so, I should get 1, but you can check that you get 1. You multiply this with alpha, you get alpha power 3 plus alpha, which is 1. So, you have to prove that in the multiplicative group, alpha has order, uh, full order. Yeah, yeah, eventually we will show that. Okay, all right. So, now once you do this computation, I am going to claim that you can do any multiplication very, very easily. Okay. Okay. Once I did this computation once and remembered this computation, put it up in some table, I can do any other multiplication very, very easily. The precise reason is what he said. The reason is alpha has order 7 in the multiplicative group. Okay. So, suppose I have to do 1 plus alpha plus alpha square raised to the power 6, what will I do? My first step is to go here and figure out what power of alpha is equal to 1 plus alpha plus alpha square. Okay, So, what power of alpha is equal to that? Alpha power 5. So, I know alpha power 5 is the same as that. So, once I do that here, I would get this. Now, I am not scared. Okay, Alpha plus alpha for alpha, for alpha power 5, whole thing raised to the power 6 would be what? alpha to the power 30, but why am I not scared of alpha to the power 30? I know alpha power 7 is 1, okay, so I can immediately reduce it to what? Alpha squared, right? 28 is going to give me that and that is in the field, okay. We will not show it, but it can be shown, okay. Do you see this? Understood? Okay. So, what does this remind you of? This should remind you of something. You have done this long back in your high school, a similar trick to simplify multiplication. What have you done? Okay, in our days, we had to use something called Clark's tables. What, what would we do? To find logarithm, right? So, if you have to multiply two nasty numbers, what do I do? I find the power of 10, which is equal to that number, like the two powers of 10. Then once I know what powers of 10 is equal to that number, what can I do? I can simply add the powers and then how do I go back to numbers again? I do the anti-log. This is the same thing except that instead of 10, you have alpha, right? So, even in this numbers, this small set of numbers, this logarithm table mod with base alpha is going to help me, okay. right? So, it is clear for real numbers that 10, 10 to the power, right? The only problem is with when the numbers become negative, right? 10 power something can never be negative. So, what do you do when it is negative? This one fancy trick your high school teacher might have taught you, but you can do it in so many ways. Just forget about the minus and then happily deal with it, right? So, it is possible to do it. Okay, there are so many other problems with 10 power also. Okay, so, if you want more granularity, you have to do some various tricks. Okay, then you have mantis extra, extra. All those problems you do not have here. Okay, so, all those things you do not have. Simple, this base alpha, everything is fine. Okay, so, this table is very, very useful. Okay, so, this table to convert elements of F8 into powers of alpha or the log table, if you want to call it base alpha is very, very useful in multiplication. I have demonstrated that. Okay. So, let me write down that table formally. Okay.
okay. So, what I have here are two notations for elements of F8, okay. So, one I will call the polynomial notation, the other I will call power notation, okay. So, the polynomial notation is what we have been using so far, okay. So, we have been saying 0, 1, alpha, 1 plus alpha, alpha squared, alpha squared plus, al plus 1, alpha squared plus alpha and then alpha squared plus alpha plus 1. What is the power notation for the same elements? For 0, you do not really have anything, right? Alpha power nothing will be 0. Alpha is a non-zero element. You can only get 1, okay? So, 0, many people in, for instance, if you were to write a C program for this table, you would denote 0 with some neg neg negative number, for instance. You would say minus infinity or something, okay? So, I can say minus infinity, okay, for 0, okay? So, it is just notation. Do not think of it as a negative large number, okay? Alpha power minus infinity, I will take it to be 0, okay? Just, just notation. I can call it anything else I want. 1 would be 0, okay. What about alpha? 1. What is 1 plus alpha? 3. What is alpha squared? Alpha squared is 2, okay. It is already in that form, okay. Do not keep searching for anything else, okay. Alpha squared plus 1 is 6. Alpha squared plus alpha is 4, 5, okay. So, when people implement finite fields in programs, okay, in, in computer programs in MATLAB or C or something, they always have this table stored, table that converts from polynomial notation to power notation. Maybe you think polynomial is not the easiest thing to store in a computer. What would you do then? How would you store these polynomials? Yeah, just the coefficients in what is called a vector notation, okay. So, what would 0 be? 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, okay. So, the vector and the power notation will be stored in the computer or the program that you in, in which you want to do finite field computations, computation for F8. Which notation is easy for addition? The vector notation is easy, right? The power notation, you would never do logarithms to do addition, okay, unless right addition you already know how to do okay so you don't want to do logarithms for addition okay so vector notation is easy and simple and direct for addition you don't want to fool around with it too much the moment you want to multiply you're always better off in the power notation okay so what is 7 in the power notation same as 0 okay so since that is there you can easily do anything you want okay so that is something, okay. So far I have shown this only for F8, okay. So you might say, how do I know it holds for F16, F32, F64, right? You never know, okay. It can be proved. We will we'll, we'll maybe see some kind of a proof for that also, okay. Any questions on this? Because this is very, very essential bread and butter, okay. So this is like the addition you learnt in your second standard, keep 3 in your, 3 in your mind, 4 in your hand, that kind of thing it is, okay. So it should be really, really inside your head, right, this this notion, how is it that this F8 suddenly becomes power notation, vector notation, this is very basic, okay, so I have not shown the real power of this, but anyway, at least for F8, you know, this is true. Any questions? It's fine. So, okay, so, so in this course, we will never really do anything other than characteristic 2. Okay. characteristic 3 and 5 and all that we won't do okay so I'm, I'm not going to resist from giving examples from characteristic 3 but if you look at the uh, look at the assignments maybe there'll be one or two problems on characteristic 3 you can you can play around with it okay it's the same thing there's nothing nothing that will change okay it's the exact same thing you'll get uh, very similar ideas but we will just do characteristic 2 just so that it's uh, it's simple okay so I want, I want to do one more example the third example I want to do is f16. Okay, F16, if I have to write down all the elements of F16, it is going to take some time, right? So, I have to write down all the 16 elements, 0, 1, alpha, 1 plus alpha, right? So, on till 1 plus alpha plus alpha square plus alpha power 3, right? All polynomials in alpha with binary coefficients of degree less than or equal to 3, all of them will be in F16, okay? So, how did I get that? I got that because this is 2 power 4. I will come to it. I will come to it. 
okay all right so the next thing is how do i select my pi of alpha right what should my pi of alpha be it should have binary coefficients and then it should have degree 4 okay so there are three choices actually in this case okay the choice that i will pick will be alpha power 4 plus alpha plus 1 okay there are two other choices both of which are irreducible the other choices are alpha power 4 plus alpha power 3 plus 1 okay what is the relationship between these two choices are they related can you see any relationship <laughs> it's too complicated. So the way you do it is, yeah, you replace alpha with alpha power minus one, and then multiply throughout by alpha power four. Have you seen that trick before with polynomials? With f of x, if you replace f of x inverse and multiply by x part degree, what do you get? What's the effect of that? You must have seen this in z transform or someplace. What's the effect of that? What does it do to your coefficients? It will do a flip left right. Okay, and you can see easily if one f of x is irreducible, x power degree f of x inverse will also be irreducible. If this has a root, that will also have a root. Okay. Inverse of that will be the root, right? You would have done this in your DSP somewhere. Okay. Okay. So that's that's there. So anytime you have a irreducible polynomial, its coefficients inverted will also have flipped around. Will also have will also be irreducible. So they'll come in pairs, right? There's also one more choice. Okay. So one more choice, which is a little bit unobvious, maybe. Okay. Okay, so this is also irreducible in F2. Okay, so you have to this requires proof. No, I mean all these things require proof. Is it is it enough to say, for instance, alpha alpha equals zero is not a root and alpha equals one is not a root. Therefore, this is irreducible. Is that enough? No, Why is it not enough? Yeah, you have to also check for degree two factors. You can have two degree two factors for this. So how will I check for degree two factors? You know, there's only one irreducible polynomial of degree two in with binary coefficient. So you divide by that and check that. It has no degree two factors, and then you know it is irreducible. It's no problem. Okay, so you can do that, and all these three will be irreducible. Of these two, of these three, these two choices are okay and simple for computation. This choice is a little bit questionable. Okay, so I'll. It's also, as I said, all the none of these three choices will make any difference to the field. The field you get is actually exactly the same up to isomorphism, but these two of the first two choices will give you an obvious simplification in the way you do your computation. The third choice, that simplification is slightly unobvious, that's all. Okay, it's not impossible, it's not very direct. Okay, I'll show you why. We'll start with alpha power 4 plus alpha plus 1. Okay, so what is what do you what do you think we should do first to try and simplify our calculations? We should try to come up with the that table. Okay, so let me go through and do that. If I do that, let's see what we do. It's it's a little bit laborious, but but I want to do it. Okay, just to just to show in one case. Okay. 0, 1, alpha, alpha, alpha squared, alpha power 3, there is really nothing to do, right? I already get that. Then what do, we, what do we have to do? Alpha power 4, what will that be? Okay, so that directly comes from here, right? This tells me alpha power 4 is alpha plus 1. So you notice, instead of thinking about the this irreducible polynomial as some polynomial which tells you how to see, how, how did we think of pi of alpha so far? We said pi of alpha is something which which you have to divide by, right? You take a of x and b of x, b of alpha, b of alpha, you multiply and then you divide by pi of alpha, take the remainder. Another way to think of pi of alpha is what? It tells you what's alpha power m in terms of lower powers of alpha. Okay, so look at this form. Okay, this is an interesting way to think about pi of alpha. It tells you what's alpha power 4 is in terms of lower powers of alpha. Okay, anytime I get multiply, right i can get powers higher than 3 anytime i get powers higher than 3 i will go to pi of alpha and simplify okay it's the same thing as doing long, long division it's not any different from doing long division but except that you can think of it this way okay so alpha power 4 is 1 plus alpha okay i want you to do this okay try it i don't think you have to really see how i'm doing it you can do this on your own very simple the only rule you have is alpha power 4 is 1 plus alpha
okay try to take your time and do this on your own it will just teach you to be careful Okay, so you see the miracle, right? So the order of alpha, multiplicative order of alpha turns out to be 15 once again. Okay. So that is what enables the possibility of having a meaningful table. <coughs> okay. Okay, are you happy? Okay. So you notice immediately why this other third guy would be a bad choice. Okay, alpha power 4 plus alpha power 3 plus alpha square plus alpha plus 1. Why would it be a bad choice? Maybe it's not an immediate thing to notice. So let's try to do this computation with this guy as the choice. Okay, this is just a rough computation. You'll see it will go wrong very quickly. Okay, so maybe you don't like it too much. Okay. So you have 0, 1, alpha, alpha squared, alpha power 3, there is no problem. What would be alpha power 4? Okay. Alpha power 3 plus alpha squared plus alpha plus 1. Okay. What would be alpha power 5? You will get 1. Okay. So the order of alpha, if you had chosen the other polynomial, it becomes 5. Okay. So maybe it is not, maybe you can conclude something very dangerous okay so this polynomial is a little bit more dangerous okay so you'll have to look for some other element to find an element of order 15 of course it should have an element of order 15 okay why i said i just told you all fields are isomorphic so it should have a element of order 15 so out of this out of all these 16 or 15 polynomials well there is only 14 really to try there will be one element of order 15 and you have to find that element okay so in this case you'll see 1 plus alpha is such an element For this polynomial okay okay but if you had chosen this polynomial in the first place you would have immediately got alpha itself to have order 15 and you don't have to go on this leather hunt of looking at what other element would would be would have order 15 okay there are easier ways of finding this element also there are smarter ways of doing it but but anyway okay so there is some there is some care you have to exercise in choosing this irreducible polynomial also while it really doesn't matter your complication your computations can be really simple if you choose one of them, okay, could be. Okay. So one can argue really there is no difference, but but it can be directly seen. Yeah, you have to prove that. Is that clear? Okay, so now let's let's just forget about this guy for a while. Okay, so we won't make such bad choices in the future. Also, we'll always choose a polynomial such that order of alpha is 15. In fact, you can show that's always possible. Okay, you can pick a pi of alpha so that order of order of alpha is 15 okay so selection of pi of alpha such that order of alpha is 2 power m minus 1 is possible okay so let me even say p power m is always possible Okay, we will again accept this result without proof. Maybe we will see a proof of what he mentioned a little later. We will see a proof of the fact that every field has an element of order p power m minus 1. Maybe we will see it if we have time in the future. Okay? But, but you can always accept this. You can say I can always find a pi of alpha for which order of alpha itself will happen to be p power m minus 1. So that is enough. So I will simply do my computations multiplication with log base alpha and I know I can always do it. Okay. Why, why is this order being p power m minus 1 very important? Then every element has a representation as an alpha power. 
okay then you can go back and forth that's that's why this order being 15 was important okay hopefully that was clear okay all right so let's try a few computations okay so i want to keep this table in mind so what i'll do is i'll do my uh, i know it's possible to do some copy and paste i'm wondering how to do that this is uh, yeah there you go Okay, so I'm going to copy this. Uh, that's great now because I can paste it in whichever page I want. Okay, so that's a nice thing about doing it in computer. So if I say paste, there you go. I have my table. Okay, all right. So that's my table for F16. So this is F16. See, that's all you need, right? You don't need anything else for doing computations in F16. Okay, if you want, you can write it in a neat form in vector and power. That's only for the computer. If you're doing it by hand, this is good enough. Okay, it's a small enough field. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to do a few computations just to get practice. I think it's useful to do it. Okay, one plus alpha plus alpha square to the power three times alpha squared plus one to the power six times one plus alpha power three to the power nine. What is this? Okay, there's nothing really you see to be scared about. It's a very simple computation at the end of the day. I already have the whole thing. You can also give the answer in your favorite notation. Usually writing down the power notation is much shorter than the polynomial notation. Eight, okay. One answer I'm getting is that it's alpha power eight. Nine, nine, okay. People are disagreeing. You may want to check what you got. Okay, so the popular answer seems to be nine. If you got alpha power thirty-nine, that's actually alpha power nine. Okay, thirty is one. Okay, so I mean I I don't want to beat about the so beat a dead snake to whatever this when you see you see how to do the computation, right? So only thing I'll point out is inverse. Okay, suppose I want to do one plus alpha squared plus alpha power three inverse. This is also very easy to do in which notation? The power notation again. If you want to do it in the polynomial notation, it's very difficult. In the power notation, it's very easy, right? What is this? This alpha power 13, no? So 13 inverse would be alpha power minus 13. So how do you convert back? You can add alpha power 15 if you want, and then you would get alpha power, right? Do you see that? This is minus 1. Is alpha power minus 13. I can obviously add any multiple of 15 to it to make it a nice whole number. So I would get alpha squared. Okay, so all these things you can do very easily in terms of computation. Okay. So in general, what do we have now? In general, if q equals p power m. Okay, if q equals p power m, f q will have this wonderful structure. It will be 0, 1, alpha, alpha squared, so on till alpha to the power p to the power m minus 2. Okay, alpha power p power m minus 1 equals what? 1 and alpha power m equals some function of alpha. Okay, so this would be something like f m minus 1 alpha power m minus 1 plus so on till f 1 alpha plus 2. Okay, how did I get this? This would come from my pi of alpha, right? Okay, basically from pi of alpha equals 0, so we get this. Okay, so I did not really prove this, but I uh, will give you a couple of ways to think about this result and then Maybe I won't prove it. I don't know. It's not 
it's not something really critical there's no real great uh, secret behind that proof so this structure really simplifies the way you multiply okay but it's this is an extremely useful structure we'll, we'll kind of accept it without proof it simplifies your multiplication okay so the idea behind the the proof is it's actually a little bit different actually what is easy to prove is what he said I mean, every field like this will have a primitive element that's it's an easier proof but that's also it also involves some technicalities i'm not going to go into it so the idea i'll, I'll give you a, another way of thinking about it i'm sorry yeah, yeah, it has the proof. There are several books which have the proof. The, another way to think about it is, see how we went about the computation of alpha, right? The powers of alpha. We, we went, went about saying 0, 1, alpha, alpha squared, right? So on, we were finding a general alpha power i, we were finding. What were we actually doing? We were trying to reduce alpha power i modulo what? Pi of alpha, okay? So we were checking when will alpha power i be equal to 1 modulo pi of alpha. When will that happen? That will give you the order of alpha, the multiplicative order of alpha, right? The smallest such i, right, gives you the multiplicative order of alpha. Do you, do you see what I am saying? It is the exact same thing. Alpha power i will become 1. When will that become 1? Okay. Another way of reading this is, this will happen if and only if pi of alpha divides alpha power i minus 1 in what? In fpx, alpha fp alpha. Right? I can move 1 to this side, alpha power i minus 1 equals 0 modulo pi of alpha. What does it mean? Pi of alpha has to divide alpha power i minus 1. It is the same thing. There is no, these two all are exactly the same. Okay? So the question is, is there an irreducible polynomial pi of alpha of degree m such that the smallest i for which pi of alpha divides alpha power i minus 1 is what? p power m minus 1. If I can always guarantee that such a polynomial will exist, then I know definitely alpha itself will be a irreducible, it will be a, will be this primitive element, this element which gives me all the order p power m minus 1 in this field, okay, right, that I know, okay. So that such a choice of pi of alpha is called a primitive polynomial, okay. So pi of alpha is always irreducible, it becomes primitive if the smallest i for which pi of alpha divides alpha power i minus 1 is i equals p power m minus 1. Okay, so that is the definition of primitive. Pi of alpha is primitive if smallest i for which pi of alpha divides alpha power i minus 1 is I will say i min, i min equals p power m minus 1, okay, okay. So such a choice is always possible, one can show for every m, for every p, a primitive polynomial will exist of degree m over fp, okay, you can show that. Once you show that, you can immediately claim alpha will always have order, okay, with such a choice, if pi of alpha is primitive, that implies order of alpha equals p power m minus 1 in f q okay okay so such an element is called primitive okay in f q an element of order q minus 1 is called primitive okay so this is also q minus 1 right okay so such an alpha is called primitive Ah, uh, yeah, of Q star, yeah, right. Primitive in FQ, okay. okay. Okay, an element of order Q minus 1 or P power M minus 1 in FQ, multiplicative order, is said to be primitive, okay. So, it is primitive as in, it is the only thing you pretty much need, okay. Okay, you also need this relationship, okay. So, this, do not, do not, do not underestimate this relationship. This is very, very important. Okay, very important. Okay, well that comes from the pi of alpha and the primitive element gives you the whole thing. Okay, right. So, so when you see this, you should conclude that finite fields are much simpler than even rational numbers or real numbers or anything. Okay, so there are only a finite number of elements and all of them can be written as a power of one element exactly. There is no approximation or anything here. Okay, exactly 
right, it is just a discrete set, they can be exactly written as a power of one element and that element satisfies very simple relationships which you can easily do to do your computation, okay. So finite fields are really, really very simple, okay, okay. So one question that somebody asked me, maybe, maybe you are not reminded of that when you see this, okay, one of the properties I showed was what? FQ contains what? FP, okay. So the way I wrote it down here, where is the FP? You can see on your screens, FQ I have written as 0, 1, alpha, alpha squared, so on, okay. Explicitly it seems like there is no FP, okay. But remember, each of these is actually equal to what? In the polynomial notation, okay, you go back to the polynomial notation, each of these powers is actually equal to some polynomial and in the, in the polynomial you will get FP, right. In the polynomial notation, will you get FP or not? Look at all the constant polynomials, right, you are including all the polynomials of degree less than or equal to M, right. So that would specifically be, the, all the constant polynomials will also be included. Of course, one of these alpha powers is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 like that, okay, all those things will also be there, okay. So FP is already here, okay. Just to illustrate that, I will pick one, uh, one example, see in, in the binary case you will not really see it, right, because 0 and 1 are already explicitly there, okay. The non-binary case you have to really see it. So I will just take one example to show why, how that works out, okay. I think that example is very useful is to understand these properties. We will we'll look at F9, it is a simple enough example and it is not that terrible, okay. So F9, F9 exists, we know F9 exists, why do we know F9 exists? 9 can be written as 3 squared, okay. So characteristic is 3 and the power dimension is 2, right, okay. So I can write, I know F9 can be written, I will start with the polynomial notation, okay, just to drive home the point, okay. So if I have to write down F9, it is good to start with the table, okay. So all possibilities would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, right. How many would you have? You would have a lot, but let me write down at least a few. 0, <coughs> am I writing it correctly? 0, yeah, so 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 2, and then what? Oh, it is only 2 digits. I am sorry, I am sorry, I am sorry. That is why I thought, I mean, I am making some mistake here. <laughs> it is fun. 0 is not there. You are right. It is only polynomials of degree less than or equal to 1, okay, less than 2, okay. So polynomials of degree less than or equal to 1, right, m minus 1, okay, I, I got carried away there, 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2, okay. So those are the possibilities. I am going to associate this with 1 and this with alpha, okay. So I would get 0, 1, 2 as it is. Then I would get alpha, alpha plus 1, alpha plus 2. Then I would get 2 alpha, 2 alpha plus 1, 2 alpha plus 2. Right? All my coefficients have to be interpreted modulo 3 and I can add and subtract very easily, no problem. For multiplication, I would need a pi of alpha, okay? And this needs to have degree 2 and it needs to be irreducible over F3, F3, okay? Okay, you will have two possibilities once again here, okay? One case, which is the good case, I believe is alpha square plus alpha plus 2. Okay. The other choice is alpha square plus 1. Okay. So you will see alpha square plus 1 is a slightly dangerous choice. Okay. We will not make that. We will simply take alpha square plus alpha plus 2. Okay. Okay. I know that is this is a primitive polynomial. Okay. You can check it is irreducible very quick. For primitive you need more checks. Okay. You have to divide by larger things but I know it is primitive. So we can do that. Okay. Let us spend a few minutes trying to do the table for this. Okay. If you do the table you will see some power of alpha will actually be equal to 2. Okay, so you can see that it is not very difficult to do that also, okay. So each of these polynomials is equal to some power of alpha, I know that for sure because order of alpha is what, 7, right. So I know that that will happen, 7 or 8, I am sorry, 8, 8, yeah. okay. So spend some time and do it, I think it is an interesting thing, okay, 0, 1, if I were to try and do powers of alpha, alpha square would be what? Yeah, you have to be careful about the minus, okay, do not, do not, you are doing F3 now, okay, you cannot say it is alpha plus 2, it is actually minus alpha minus 2, which in F3 is actually 2 alpha plus 1, okay, so you have to be very careful, okay, alpha power 3 would be, okay, 2 alpha squared plus alpha, okay, be very careful with the computation, so you get 4 alpha plus 2, which is actually 
2 alpha plus 2 okay okay check my computations this is all very quite dangerous did I make any mistakes okay so let me do maybe let me do one or two cases in detail so that I get some confidence then we'll go 2 alpha plus 1 plus alpha right so this is 4 alpha plus 2 plus alpha this is 5 alpha plus 2 which is the same as alpha 2 alpha plus 2 right right that's fine so if you want to do alpha power 4 you have to do 2 alpha squared plus 2 alpha which should be again 4 alpha 6 alpha which should be 2 okay so alpha power 4 would be 2 alpha power 5 is slightly easier 2 alpha alpha power 6 is 2 alpha squared which becomes alpha plus 2 okay so then alpha plus 7 would be alpha squared plus 2 alpha which would be uh, alpha plus 1 okay and then alpha power 8 you can check would be alpha squared plus alpha which is 1 okay you can check that just be 1 okay Okay, so that's your table. Okay, so if you want in this, in this you can write the power. This doesn't really make sense. One is zero, two is four, one zero is what? One itself. One one is seven. One two is. One two is what? Six. 2 alpha is 5, 2 alpha plus 1 is 2, 2 alpha plus 2 is 3. So that is your table. Okay, So once you have that you can do anything you want very very easily. Okay. All right. Okay. So again, as I said, this is just to show you how this fields, the fields are the same in any characteristic, but we will only do characteristic 2, we will not do anything other than characteristic 2, okay, so we do not care beyond characteristic 2. And in characteristic 2, you can easily see that the binary field 0, 1 will be there everywhere, okay, and the 1 also behaves in the very similar fashion. Uh, sir, you are using some 3 plus 1 calculations and all that, right? so characteristic more than 2 will Why does 64 QAM come into the picture? I mean, you are assuming the binary syllable symmetric channel for now. So, mm. while doing error control coding, I think the characteristic is there. Mm. But for the other constellations, and now you eventually need to. No, see, any constellation is just a finite set of points. I can always map a bit sequence to that, to each point. Then I can do my coding over bits. Nothing stops me from doing it. So, you do not have to think in terms of constellation and all that. So, in fact, the most popular field happens to be F256. Okay. Okay. I think there's one VLSI person at least here. You would imagine why 256 is very attractive. Okay. In the vector notation, how many bits would it take for F256? 8 bits, right? And why is 8 bits good for these VLSI people? They, can, they cannot think in terms of anything other than 8, right? They always point bytes and 8. Anything, if you say 7, multiples of 7, they get scared immediately. So, so that's so that's why 256 is very popular. In fact, most of the Reed Solomon codes that are in your hard drive, it's in your CD drives, in outer space, most of them are over F256. Okay. So under the notation for FQ, you'll see people also use the notation GFQ. Okay. So GF2 power M is very very common. This G stands for Galois. Okay. That's how you pronounce his name. It's a French name. So in French, the last consonant is never pronounced. Okay, so it's just there for style. Okay, so this guy's name is Galois. O I is wa. Okay, Galois. So he is. He was. I mean, you should read his story. It's a fascinating story. He died when he was 32. I think if he had not died, several things in algebra would have been solved. Okay. So anyway, that's another story. <laughs> I think he died 32. Maybe younger than that. I'm not sure. 21. No? Is that the right way? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Some uh, crazy guy. Okay. Alright, so that's about 
fields. Okay, so at this point, you should be very comfortable when I write down a general field, at least when I write down f2 power m. Okay, so let me reiterate what it is. How would I write down f2 power m? Okay, I will always use this notation because it's very convenient. Alpha, at least when I write it down, alpha power 2 power m minus 2, and then I would say alpha power 2 power m minus 1 is 1, and then I would say alpha power m is some function of smaller powers. Okay, so it's a very nice convenient short way of writing the whole field. Okay, so you can write the whole field in one way. Okay, this is the way, this is the general idea. Okay, so I think at this point we are pretty much ready to see the reason why finite fields are so nice. Okay, so why did we, why, why did I say we